and we have the other word type like the flask container and what you mean by a flask container is you can define your own uh, container and unlike the container which is just a kind of like a box the data is written in the container instance that's what I said and in flask container we can store data and for your own kind of data properties you can define your own so that's what we mean by a flex container and you will have the kind of tutorial tomorrow during the second interworking because we use flex container due to the SDT which is smart device template in TS23 anyways you will have some kind of practice on the first container tomorrow so for the content instance you store all the data sorry there is a missing time by speed again uh, you will put all the data in the content attribute but in case of flask container if you kind of define your own container having width height and depth as individual attributes then you can do something like that so you can store something, everything into the content, a single prop uh, attribute, or you can define your own attributes like this. That's the kind of difference between container, content instance versus flex container. And time series and time series instances, as the name says, uh, we support the time series data, and by the feature, the platform whenever it Creates the time series instances. It will monitor if there is any missing data, and then if there is a missing data, then there will be the recording in the time series, which is the kind of container for this time series instance. So that's the feature that we provide. And the announcement. So we can announce something residing here to the other places like this. So for example, when AE creates a container, for example here, and during the creation or after the creation, like the at the update time for this container, uh, this AE can request a announcement to the CSC who has that resource. And the request, for example, is saying that, okay, this is the container that I'm going to create on your CSC, on you, and please announce this resource to the other CSC, for example, the kind of server side CSC. Then the other applications, for example, can discover those announced resources here. That means they don't have to kind of have any prior a priori knowledge saying that okay container one is residing in CC one and the other the other but if the other applications announce the kind of distributed resources in one place like here for example the server side CSC in one of them term we call it IN CSC infrastructure node CSC anyways in one place then the other applications can just look up that CSC by the kind of business rules. So that's how we can use the announcement, for example. And authorizations, or in other words, access control. And we have a dedicated kind of session tomorrow regarding the access control and not just the kind of technical understanding, how it works. We will be show you the uh, showing you the kind of short demo with a simple scenario. So for the moment, let's skip it over. And there's my one of my favorite feature, which is the group. And we create a group of resources and resources. Again, can represent the devices, resources could represent the entities, or resources could represent data, for example. That means we can kind of leverage the group feature for those different concepts once they are the one and two resources. And the 
planner or planner point, we can send a batch request or batch operation to that planner point, and then the CSC who has that group with the planner point and the kind of virtual resource child resource, uh, he will do the fan out and of course fans out the request and aggregates the response and send it back to the originator who sent the request. So that is the kind of group feature. And of course we will uh, have a practice on the group in a couple of sessions at this tutorial event. And the device management, short DM. And we in one MPM we support uh, OMA DM and OMA lightweight MPM and BBF TR069 for the device management kind of feature. So I will just give you the kind of brief introduction how it is designed and how it is working by the implementation. So the concept is AE, which is again one MTM application. Since that is the one MTM application, he talks to the platform in one MTM language, one MTM APIs, and uh, kind of kind of. He was kind of requesting to the platform saying that okay, there is a device in OMADM and please kind of send a kind of control message to that device. And please, that is the OMADM device. But I'm talking to you in one MTM language. So that's the concept. And one MTM platform will do the interpretation and for example, in case of OMA DM, there's a DM server inside that platform who got the device management request in one MTM API. He will kind of send the OMA DM request targeting that device and do something, get the response back, and send the response back to the one MTM application. So as a simple wrap up. Even the device is kind of working, or device is managed by OMADM or Lightweight MPM or TR069. One MTM application just talks in one MTM language to manage those devices remotely. So that is one MTM device management concept mainly. And the location, so. Uh, what is supported by the one MTM location related feature is we can create a location policy resource and as the name says that is the location information acquisition policy let me say. So there's a several settings that you can get a an entity's location information. So that is the policy setting. So this is not the location information like the geolocation, longitude, latitude information itself, but the policy to get that information. And by the policies, we can set the method, for example, the GPS of the device which holds this location policy like this. So whenever there is a device having the GPS kind of sensor, then the platform will kind of use the GPS hardware module and get the longitude latitude, for example, and put that data into a newly created container. The CSC will create the container and put the data over and over into the container. And of course, there will be the linkage from the policy research, which is requested to be created by the application and the container is created by the CSC so the application has no idea where is the location data provided by the CSC so there is the link so that's the base concept for the location policy and the subscription notification we will use subscription notification today and tomorrow so this is important and this is really useful and this is a really common uh, feature for the for different 
uh, technologies so subscription so we subscribe to something and in 1m10 case again we subscribe to 1m10 device sorry we subscribe to a 1m10 resources resources could be device or the data or the entity whatever depending on the resource type for example if we are kind of subscribing to an AEN resource then we are kind of getting some events once the AE resource gets updated for example yeah, for example if we uh, create a subscription to the container which is the kind of data box in an easy wording then for example if the container gets new content instance or in an easy word data inside then we can get the newly created data or content instance resource over the notification so that's the concept and the good thing for one term subscription feature is uh, once we create a con subscription and we can put or we can configure multiple kind of notification target so yeah we can send the same notification to multiple entities and it doesn't have to be me like the subscription creator in this case it could be the other entity or the other endpoint so you can kind of uh, exploit that concept and good to know APIs and return content parameter it has been updated a couple of times so I should kind of update the table anyways for example depending on the operation that you are firing out to the platform uh, you can expect different result in the response what I mean by different result is of course uh, what happens is the same but what you get in the response is different for example you can get a resource by the resource retriever but by the setting you can get more than one resource starting from the target and what's the other and whenever you create a resource uh, you can get the resource representation when you said attributes but if we use the other option like the hierarchical objects or in other words structured resource identifier like like we saw uh, home slash room slash date slash something something whenever we create a resource then instead of all the resource representation we can just get that uh, structured resource identifier when we use this option for visual content parameter. For all the details, please refer to the specification. And the communication kind of methods. So it is indicated by the response type parameter. Of course, what I mean by the parameter is the request message parameter. So in the request, we can uh, in, uh, we can, can choose the response type and the response could come in blocking mode right away after the request and there would be the acknowledgement first and then there could be the asynchronous result from the receiver to the original originator that's non-blocking asynchronous communication and once the uh, we don't know when to kind of finish and the originator might not be able to receive the asynchronous message from the receiver so in that case originator can request a re send a request having response type equals non-blocking synchronous mode then it can later just periodically or sometimes it can kind of flash the Wizard and yeah, that's the non blocking synchronous uh, communication and polling channel. Mm, this is the concept. So, whenever 
the request coming from the other entity on the right hand side cannot just directly kind of uh, forward it to the target by the intermediary entity like this for example the firewall or the NAT something something then the concept is uh, the request will be kind of sustained by this guy and the target is asking periodically saying that okay is there any request for me that you need to forward to me and it will ask it by the following channel API and if there is any then the pending request is kind of sent in the response to this request as a piggyback and the re response to that request will be kind of sent of in the other kind of request from this target to the intermediary kind of entity. That's the concept. So you can use it if you wish. Um, the other kind of approach to solve this kind of NAT or fire problem would be MQTT. And one of them provides MQTT protocol binding. So uh, there will be the MQTT broker just by the imagination and since MQTT is communicating with all the broker all the clients are talking to the broker so the request uh, the kind of hosting says here in the middle he got some request and he can send the for the request to the target to the MQTT broker first and then he will get the request from the MQTT broker so there will be no issue and that's normally the case that we are using for our uh, project for the deployment